Hello friends, in our previous session we were discussing about the classification of igneous rocks. Now how different workers came up with a different classification strategy and if we combine how complicated it become. We being engineers, we have to deal with people in the business, the common and industry etc. Now we wanted a classification, can we little simplify it? Often it become too complicated, too much of information which we may not able to handle them frequently. Let us go to another type of classification. This is a classification combining all those whatever we have discussed. We have discussed igneous rocks are classified into plutonic, hippo, basal and volcanic. There we have mentioned that volcanics are intrusive, hippo bezel also intrusive, plutonics are intrusive and within hippo bezel there are types of C concordant, these are discordant, there are concordant bodies within the hippo bezel. So, if I follow this, it will take into account of the mode of occurrence of igneous rock that is interest for a quarry person. Okay. Second, where these rocks are found, when I say plutonic, we have in mind what are the characteristics of plutonic rock. Example, when we say plutonic rock, we mean it is equigranular, it is a thoroughly crystalline there is an interlocking arrangement of all minerals and based on this it has a higher crushing strength, shear strength, all those it, it is free from any pore cavities etc. we know. Thus, when I say hippo yes we mean it has inequigranular arrangement. When I say volcanic, there are gas cavities, amygdaloidal structure, ropey surface, etc. we know. Therefore, this classification has an attachment of plutonic, hippo volcanic. Okay, that is one. Another beauty is there are minerals like quartz, felspar, hornblende, pyroxene, olivine, magnetite, Plus, see, there is a M called muscovite, B, biotite. These are the major rock forming minerals for igneous rocks. Presence or absence of these minerals define the particular rock. Example, when I say granite, what do I mean? Granite is a Mineralogically composed of quartz, nearly 40-50 percent. It is also composed of a feldspar. This is a feldspar. This is a granite component. This is a feldspar. Yes, there is a little quantity of horn band, maybe 5 percent, 2 percent, 3 percent. And there is a certain amount of muscovite in it. There is certain amount of biotite in it. And the magnetite, as you come beside this side, this magnetite, there is 1 or 2 percent. It means now I can define what is granite. Granite is a plutonic rock composed of quartz and feldspar in abundance, and then hornblende, muscovite, biotite and magnetite are accessory minerals. They are very less than 10 percent. Is that all about the granite? No. Granite, see, I, we have considered 
this type of classification based on SiO2 in our previous session. Yes, granite is therefore acidic igneous rock. Plutonic rock, it contains this kind of minerals, it is acidic. We have also classified, classified based on color index. Yes, it has a leucocratic. People do classify based on saturation, oversaturated, saturated, unsaturated, undersaturated, they also bring that one into because it has something to do with formation of igneous rocks which we will study shortly. Therefore, they also prefer to have this kind of classification for the igneous rock. Now, this classification includes that one. You see now SiO2 content increases, FEMB increases this side and it talks about the minerals present. Therefore, now I can very precisely define granite. What do you mean by granite? Granite is a plutonic, acidic, leucocratic, oversaturated rock consisting of quartz and feldspar as the dominant mineral, magnetite, muscovite, biotite as the accessory mineral. I need not repeat that it is equigranular. It has interlocking arrangement, entire rock mass is crystalline, etc. Because I have said plutonic. Plutonic mean that it has that kind of that kind of attributes. That is, it is coarse grain to medium grain. It is equigranular, thoroughly crystalline, all those we are adding to it. Thus, now our classification, you see, see, granite, sorry, T is missing, T, G, R, A, N, I, T, E, we will make it correction. G R A N I T, okay. Plutonic rock. If the same mineralogical composition, that is, it has a quartz, it has pelsfar, little hornblende, muscovite, biotite, and magnetite. Same composition means originally magma was a depth. The same composition magma now brought to intermediate depth. The magma was here magma was here, that magma came here and if they solidify here, they form the granite. If that comes here, that comes here, it forms hippabasal rock, then it is called granite porphyry. What do you mean by porphyry? Yesterday we have studied some minerals are larger in size some minerals are smaller in size, majority of the minerals are smaller, they themselves have interlocking arrangement with the neighboring small minerals, but these small minerals and with the larger minerals, the contact is that strong because not interpenetrated, because the larger minerals have well shaped crystals like this, they have and small minerals like this, it cannot have interpenetrated, whereas here it is possible inter among themselves they have interlocking. With the larger grain there is interlocking is not possible, therefore there are only few larger crystals and this kind of texture we call porphyry. So, granite porphyry Therefore, it is a hippabasal rock. Porphyritic means hippabasal. Hippabasal rocks generally exhibit a porphyritic texture. What is granite porphyry? 
it has a composition of a quartz, a feldspar, little hornblende, little magnetite, a muscovite, hematite, zoid, sorry, biotite, and it has unequal grain size. It is also acidic, it is leukocratic, it is oversaturated. Again, SiO2 in this range above 65 percent. Okay, here I have marked 65 above. Now, we can define a granite porphyry. Granite porphyry is a hypabasal, acidic, leukocratic, oversaturated, igneous rock consisting of quartz, feldspar, hornblende, biotite, muscovite and magnetite. Feldspar and quartz are the essential abundant minerals that is granite porphyry. What is granite porphyry? I repeat granite porphyry is a hypabasal, acidic, leukocratic, oversaturated igneous rock consisting feldspar and quartz as abundant mineral, biotite, muscovite, magnetite and hornblende as the accessory minerals. I move on to the table. If magma from here instead of solidification here, instead of solidification here, it may come down and solidify here. We call it volcanic rock. Same magma, only place of solidification changed accordingly there phys other physical properties change yesterday we have discussed what are those volcanic rocks we know contain a gas cavities vesicular structure that is often amygdaloidal gas cavities are filled often so rapidly cooled cooled and solidified that they become a glassy surface, glassy, ropey, Continue, there are several flows that take place. Of all these are the structures commonly seen in <coughs> volcanic rocks. Therefore, now I can define this is a rhyolite, R H Y rhyolite. Now, what is a rhyolite? Rhyolite is a volcanic igneous rock consisting of quartz, feldspar, little hornblende, muscovite, biotent, and magnetite. They are acidic, they are leukocratic they are oversaturated. These are all the characteristics of rhyolite. Now, how do I explain? Very briefly, rhyolite is a volcanic, acidic, leukocratic, oversaturated igneous rock with plagioc with feldspar and quartz as abundant minerals, hornblende, muscovite, biotite and magnetite as accessory mineral. So, when I said volcanic, I mean it is amygdaloidal or vesicular etcetera. So, I need not say it again, it is a rhyolite. And all they have composition SiO2 above this, FeMg lesser than this. Now, this component we have completed. If we move this side, SiO2 decreases 65 to 55 say. Okay. Now, FeMg little increases. Their mineral, you see, horn blend is becoming a major mineral. It was very minor constituent here. 
it is becoming a major feldspar once again become a major mineral here quartz was the dominant among quartz and feldspar here feldspar is the dominant quartz became so less less than 10 percent ok quartz less than 10 percent feldspar dominant hornblende become a dominant as usual there are myotides there are muscovites SiO2 within this range FEMG slightly increased and if this is the nature we have a rock called a cyanite S Y E N I T E short form I have right cyanide cyanite S Y E N I T E cyanite is a plutonic igneous rock when I say plutonic means equigranular the interlocking arrangement we find it is a thoroughly crystalline all those things we mean so it is a sub acidic it is a sub leucocratic it is a saturated you may ask what is saturated and non saturated shortly we come to that point okay now i can describe cyanide cyanide is a plutonic sub acidic sub leucocratic saturated igneous rock consisting feldspar and hornblende as the major constituents and quartz less than 10 percent muscovite biotite and magnetite are also accessory they are also less than 10 percent cyanide porphyry nothing changed same sub acidic sub uh, sub leucocratic saturated mineral composition what is that their position changed to vertical classification they belong to hipa basal hipa basal i mean again unequal grain size therefore i can describe the cyanide porphyry very easily cyanide porphyry is a hipa basal sub acidic sub leucocratic saturated igneous rock consisting of feldspar and hornblende as the abundant minerals then quartz muscovite biotite iron oxide all as the lesser altogether lesser accessory ok now what is a trachyte T R A C H Y T trachyte trachyte is the same I have explained instead of magma forming cyanide here cyanide porphyry here if that magma comes here they form a trachyte it is a kind of volcanic rock friends how do I explain trachyte trachyte is a volcanic sub acidic sub leucocratic saturated igneous rock consisting of feldspar hornblende in abundance quartz muscovite biotite iron oxide etc as accessory i go to diorite how do we explain diorite now we have tried granite and cyanide now it become easy for us diorite is a plutonic sub basic sub melanocratic unsaturated igneous rock consisting of feldspar hornblende pyroxene and you see this biotite almost decreased muscovite do not biotite and olivine often you find often less and magnetite you find that is a diorite what is a diorite generally olivine you do not find often i do not say absent okay 
So, direct once again I repeat direct is a plutonic sub, sub basic sub melanocratic unsaturated igneous rock consisting of feldspar, hornblende, pyroxene as abundant mineral, magnetite, olivine, biotite, etc., accessory mineral. Friends, direct porphyry. Direct porphyry is a hypobasal, sub basic, sub melanocratic, unsaturated igneous rock with composition feldspar, hornblende, pyroxene as abundant and these as olivine, magnetite, and biotite as accessory mineral. Diorite porphyry. If diorite magma, here it become diorite, here it, it become diorite porphyry, here it become andesite, a kind of volcanic rock. Now, how do I explain? Andesite is a volcanic sub basic sub melanocratic unsaturated igneous rock consisting of feldspar, hornblende, pyroxene abundantly and these magnetite, olivine, biotite as accessory mineral. Then I go to Gabbro. Again, Gabbro is a plutonic, basic, melanocratic, undersaturated igneous rock with plagioclase, feldspar, feldspar I generally call, plagioclase later we shall talk, feldspar, pyroxene, olivine, magnetite, olivine and magnetite accessory, these are abundant minerals. Gabbro is a plutonic igneous rock consisting of feldspar and pyroxene abundantly, olivine magnetite in lesser abundance, it is a plutonic, it is a basic melanocratic undersaturated. I define Gabbro is a plutonic basic melanocratic undersaturated igneous rock consisting of feldspar, pyroxene abundantly, olivine and magnetite subordinate. This is Gabbro, dolerite, hypobasal rock. I have written porphyry, porphyry, porphyry. I am purposely missing that word porphyry because here we have the unequal grain size, here, here, here. There also unequal grain size. Unfortunately, in the hand specimen, this we are not able to appreciate because under microscope you will able to appreciate, you can see easily. There also there is one specific mineral which is a larger in size, the other mineral is a smaller. Example, if I have a pyroxene is a mineral larger in size, feldspar may be partially inside, partially outside or may be total, totally inside. And this kind of relationship where pyroxene is larger and feldspar is smaller, the word ophitic texture is used, O, P, H, I, T, I, C, ophitic. So, this kind of relationship where only augite is larger, reverse cannot happen, that is plagioclase or feldspar mineral cannot be larger, this is larger, then this is smaller found inside partially like this or totally and that kind of relationship is ophitic and this is also unequal size. This is small, this is larger. 
but this can be seen only under microscope therefore we have not written them as a porphyry <coughs> so dolerite how do we say dolerite is a hypervisal basic melanocratic undersaturated igneous rock consisting of feldspar pyroxene abundantly olivine and magnetite subordinate amount. Similarly, basalt. Basalt is a volcanic basic melanocratic undersaturated rock consisting of feldspar pyroxene abundantly olivine magnetite subordinate. Friends, as you see from this side to this side the color become darker leucocratic to melanocratic as you move from here to here SiO2 decreases completely we do not find SiO2 quartz it is under saturated it is unsaturated no quartz but here saturated only less than 10 percent of the quartz we find we do not find also most often and this is quartz is absent why we call saturated unsaturated we shall discuss and this kind of classification satisfies major population may many stakeholders I draw your attention here there is a small I have mentioned quartz vein. Quartz vein is nothing but it is a hundred percent quartz there is nothing else. I do not say there is no muscovite and biotite they are less than one percent or two percent. So, quartz vein is nearly 100 percent quartz only asset it is called ultra acidic similarly we do have ultra basic that is that can be totally olivine rich peridotite dunite such rocks are there which are ultra basic thus we have two extremes, but these rocks occur, these rocks occur at a great depth at the boundary between the mantle and the crust, which rarely come to the surface for our application. We focus little on them. Quartz vein again occur in a minor, minor quantity. Locally we may find and therefore, we do not focus much on them all our interest is especially on granite, granite porphyry, rhyolite, cyanite, cyanite porphyry, trachyte we are not that interested because of tourism, abundance, availability not attractive plus no shining. Diorite we are interested, diorite porphyry we are interested and a site we rarely come across because this kind of volcanic rock can take place under water in the sea. The sea floor such magma comes and they develop. The reason is simple if this if this is the sea, if this is the sea, this is the crust, if this is the sea, below that is above is a continent, below that crustal thickness is high, the crustal thickness is less, we have the asthenosphere or lower and from there if anything comes it can reach easily, but it cannot reach that easily to here it has to travel a long distance, it contains so much of um, see heavy minerals and high temperature minerals 
by the time they travel here they lose all temperature therefore they may solidify somewhere chances of their exposure on the ground or close to the ground is rare and such they do not reach at all to the surface therefore volcanic rock of andesite composition is rare on the ground but they are found here and we rarely come across such kind of rocks for our engineering activities again gabbro we come across dolerite we come across come across basalt we come across come across we deal with them now you have a question if andesite cannot reach the surface it is more magnetic only when more heavy minerals reach how basalt can reach why not andesite fine our doubt is highly valid friends viscosity here viscosity here differs now this is neither too mobile like this nor viscous like this therefore this is one reason along with that they have enough magnesium also because of viscosity they cannot flow because of magnetite they become heavy although they have magnetite they are mobile they can therefore we have the chances of these min rocks on the ground but these we do not have this is a classification which meets the requirement of many people i personally believe therefore i prefer this classification yes friends just now i have said saturation what do we mean by saturation the scientist called bowen proposed and studied and came up with a observation that if we have a magma magma consists of several constituents and if we have calcium rich plagioclases forming under that condition we have olivin also can form they can co exist commonly wherever we have calcium rich plagioclases olivin is also common their temperature of formation is more or less similar say if this is 1300 degree this also 1300 degree they can form if calcium and sodium rich plagioclase if calcium and sodium rich plagioclase we have magnesium pyroxene can be formed magnesium rich pyroxene sodium and calcium carefully see calcium dominant along with calcium sodium came but it is not dominant calcium is still dominant next sodium become dominant calcium become less if this kind of minerals if develop correspondingly this kind of minerals also can be seen means in a rock if this is there this kind if this is there this kind this is there this kind is more common now if this is the kind of mineral yes these are all common so an erich plagioclase or feldspar we do find they are associated along with it ampibol mineral ampibol mineral now as the temperature falls here they stop here see if olivin is formed only within the temperature range olivin can form if temperature falls if olivin is formed it become inactive it cannot participate further therefore once olivin is formed within certain temperature range it become inactive below a particular temperature and this mineral starts formation 
this mineral also form at certain temperature range below that temperature range if any magnesium rich pyroxene developed they do not participate further they become inactive then this mineral starts solidification once this mineral from this also in the temperature range if temperature fall below this they also locked they do not participate in the mineral or crystallization process further similarly amphibolite they do form in some range beyond that they if amphibole developed they become inactive and then biotite start crystallization what we are saying is once the mineral formed they are active only in a very narrow temperature range below the temperature range they are not active they do not participate further just they kept aside they are away inactive therefore we call it discontinuous there is no continuous variation discontinuous now as per this olivine is the first form and quartz is the last form they cannot coexist together by normal process olivine and quartz cannot coexist together and quartz cannot be seen if at all olivine and quartz if found together very 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 rare case we call incongruent melting what is that let us see i leave it at this point now we see what is we have continuous melting continuous reaction what is that if i have calcium rich plagioclase yes with some temperature range calcium rich plagioclase is developed if a temperature fall below that what happens do they become inactive still they are active they want to participate means their whatever the original a kind of plagioclase formed at this temperature if temperature fall this this mineral change to they get altered get changed over to a new mineral again another like this thus once the mineral formed in the magma system they are willing to undergo continuous changes in response to temperature whereas these do not they are very rigid only in some particular range temperature in this now as a result so therefore during a crystallization process this is the order after this we have biotite after this k feldspar after this muscovite after this quartz so what do we mean is several messages from this quartz is the last to form perhaps in the temperature range between 700 to 800 say muscovite may be little higher temperature 750 to 850 like that and these are very high temperature 1300 degree 1400 degree and these are the first to form and they can be found in a rock this can be found in a rock this can be found in a rock and this and this cannot occur together because during a crystallization process what happens is say olivine is a mineral of fe mg si o4 they require only small amount of oxygen so and silicon sio2 whereas if i have a feldspar or muscovite i give the composition of k a l si3 o8 i have so much of oxygen silicon 3 silicon dioxide eight oxygen amount what is that therefore the amount of quartz required is less here as you go here 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 the amount of quartz required 
here increases, here increases. If in a magma, if so much of SiO2 is present, if everybody is satisfied, their requirement, this forms. Correct? Therefore, this forms only if everyone is satisfied, saturated. If that is the case, if we have so much of quartz, they do not form, only these can dominantly form because they need more quartz, anyway quartz is available, SiO2 is available. This can form, then they do not form. It means they form only forever magma which have SiO2 content less. These are developed. This reaction series helps me to <coughs> helps me to help me to understand a different process formation of igneous rocks and a different type of igneous rocks. Based on this combination, I one type of rock, this and this another, this and this another, this and this another. See, we have different type of rock. And this one can change with the temperature, fall in temperature. So, this can with this, this can be with this, we can have a different combination like that. Therefore, we have variety of igneous rocks that can be formed and can be explained how they form with the help of Bowen's reaction series. Friends, just now I have mentioned the incongruent melting. So, according to that, olivine and quartz should not coexist as for this, but to once in 100 or still rare, occasionally olivine and quartz can coexist. That process we call it incongruent, that means failure. Olivine failed, it should have been separated out and it should not have remained in the system but still remained and crystallization process continued and quartz developed. But this mineral once formed did not escape, did not. So, therefore, they could not escape the system, they are still present in front of this, they do their job, they do crystallization. This process is called incongruent melting. Friends, now while with the table itself, I have discussed what is a granite. Granite is most often called king of all the rocks. This rock is used for decorative purpose, foundation, architecture, aggregate, wherever you mention polishing, everywhere it is. And from India, the leader pink granite is a world class granite we are marketing, we are so fortunate. Therefore, granite <coughs> finds its application in all types of construction activities including masonry and it has a wonderful property. Therefore, it is called king of granite. I invite your special attention therefore, I mention once again repeat separately. It is fine grain to coarse grain, medium grain, all. Sorry, it is non porphyritic. It is non porphyritic. I'm sorry. It is equigranular texture, equigranular composition, orthoclase and quartz. Mica, Hornblende, these are accessory mineral, acidic, non-porous, it is a plutonic. Just now we have mentioned in the table. Yes. Basalt is another rock widely used as aggregate. Basalt is called A grade aggregate. I have mentioned in my table so many rocks, but I mention only few rocks here. Basalt is 
the A grade aggregate and then diorite is also of the same category. Basalt has a melanocratic, it is a fine grained, vesicular amygdaloidal pillow structure is common. If a basalt form under water, if they form on the land, then these are the common structures. Mineral composition, augite, plagioclase and olivinous accessory basic and less porous volcanic. It is used as a building stone, ballast locally used, not preferred, but it is an aggregate, used as aggregate. Now, <coughs> friends, only two rocks I have mentioned, all other rocks I have mentioned there, basalt, yes we have mentioned, it is widely used aggregate and granite a king of rock, one is a king of aggregate, another king of building material, building stone. Okay. What are the engineering properties we expect from a rock and which rock have this property, etc. Now, we will discuss what is the advantage of the granite or other plutonic rocks, etc. Plutonic rocks, I am not talking only about the granite, cyanite, diorite, gabbro also, just now we have mentioned granite is king and all others do have some properties, but attractive color may not have, for example, gabbro. All plutonic rocks are equigranular, advantage, they take the equal load. Interlocking of grains, another advantage, because of interpenetration, there is no cavity inside, water do not percolate, they are non-porous therefore. They are weathering resistant, atmospheric agency cannot attack them because they are mostly composed of quartz and feldspar mineral, they cannot be easily attacked by atmospheric agents. Because they form at a great depth under high pressure and they have high crushing strength, they also form at a high temperature, therefore normal temperature, other temperature does not matter for them. They are heat and temperature resistant as well and waterproof. Therefore, they are suitable for carving, smooth carving like humpy, decorative, polishing, facing, dimensional, cut and into masonry block as aggregate, yes, crush them into fragments and use for road or concrete work, etc. For foundation, yes, they are suitable. For foundation and dressing not required, anyway. Facing and polishing, just now I said, and masonry work, all kinds of work, all plutonic igneous rocks are suitable. Hippabasal rocks, due to unequal grain size, not suitable for carving, we have mentioned, unequal grains unequal response to pressure lead to the differential pressure cyclement and cracks. So, pressure alone, their weathering effects because of unequal grain size, the larger grain size, smaller grain size. Their response to atmospheric agents is different Therefore, they undergo differential degree of weathering and therefore not suitable, especially for carving work, those structures which are to be in open air. Volcanic rock, if they are massive, they are suitable, like Belgaum aggregate, that can be Belgaum basalt. But if they contain vesicles and glassy or amygdaloidal, they are not suitable if it is a glassy, amorphous condition 
not suitable for many applications. Friends, these are all general observations. Okay? But for specific purpose, there may be specific properties. We expect, we will continue our discussions in subsequent section, session. Friends, we have tried to classify the rocks and in that classification, how based on their physical properties, the composition, color, etc. And now, with the help of that table, we can qualify and recommend or uh, suggest this rock is suitable for this like this because such and such property possess. Thank you, friends.